This episode is brought to you by Mobility Public Relations, the full-service PR agency created specifically for mobility technology companies just like yours. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to Romobile. Romobile is dedicated to making smartphone app development easy. Their framework, which is called Roads, allows developers to write an app once and deploy that app across all major smartphones. They also have a couple of other services. One is RoSync. It's a sync server which enables you to keep data current on the device, and therefore you can use your app with or without a data connection. The other one is something called RoHub, which empowers developers to create apps online. Check them out at rowmobile.com, R-H-O-M-O-B-I-L-E.com. Here's the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Untether.tv. This is a special series that we're doing here at Untether.tv to uh, understand mobile's impact on certain industry segments. And the first one that actually we're looking at is the is the traditional media segment. Uh, I've got a special guest here. His name is Tom Hearn. He's the, he's the CFO of the Score Media, uh, which is a uh, a sports related uh, television channel. But it's so much more than that. And we're here really to talk about the impact that that mobile is having on media, traditional media like television, as well as um, for the casual and fanatical sports fan. So Tom, thanks for coming and doing this. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. So uh, let's talk very quickly about what the score is, because for those people, massive audience uh, for your mobile applications, but maybe people don't understand what the score is. And uh, certainly most of my audience is from outside of Canada. Well, the score is a sports specialty channel. Uh, in Canada, there are specialty cable channels that are allowed to focus on specific genres. We're a sports news and information genre uh, station. We do 15% of our uh, broadcasting is, is uh, live events. So we'll cover some uh, NCAA football and basketball. We've got Serie A soccer. Um, but our main uh, goal as a station is to provide you with sports news and information and the conversation around the game. Uh, in a in a raw, authentic, interesting fashion, and in, in a way you're probably not going to have that conversation in other sports channels. So, yeah, and certainly um, when you when you embrace uh, when you engage with a score, um, you're you're not engaging with uh, live pub, live broadcast, but what you're engaging with is a live audience. Ultimately, is it is that absolutely? And so for us, web and mobile seemed a, a very natural extension about how to continue to expand that conversation yeah. with the. Sports fan, how to continue to give them more information where they want to get it, and with the evolution of social media technology, uh, engage their viewpoint and perspective on the game or the events or the players um, in a way that you weren't able to in a traditional TV fashion. And, and you know, how, how important was the decision for you guys? So you guys, the decision to, to go into the mobile and the social space, obviously social, web, social, mobile, because that seems to be the evolution that's happened so quickly. So what, what has it been, I mean, what was the decision-making points along the way in order to be able to make those decisions to go into web, social, mobile? We were originally, I mean, 15 years ago when we started this station, we were a sports data station. We didn't even have a license from the CRTC yet. We just put up on a channel live scores and information. Like, and the, we like, the, weather, like the weather channel for, uh, for sports? Kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. And we evolved into being able to do highlights and some live events, et cetera, when certain opportunities came up that uh, allowed stations to evolve. And then about four years ago, um, we made a, a deal with Rogers, um, the carrier on the wireless side, to be able to create a little application that said, okay, if I'm a BlackBerry user and I want to get uh, some sports news and information, let me give you a little application. It'll only cost you a couple bucks a month, and you can have all the sports news and information that, that we can feed to you. So this, this was, was really advanced, obviously. This was pre-smartphone, as we know smartphone today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once the once the iPhone came out, it really changed the game. Um, so it it really created uh, an application rich environment that allowed you to custom build uh, an application that would bring you all the sports news and information that you wanted to. Um, in the Canadian market, we can still provide some highlight capability. Uh, we provide you with a ton of short form content. Uh, so all of our own. Uh, 
talent in different sports areas. We give you little video highlights, uh, maybe your picks of the day um, as to w what the, the betting lines of the game are and who you should be betting on, et cetera. Yep. Um, and it gave uh, the opportunity for the sports fan who couldn't be in front of the TV set, which is a lot of us a lot of the time. Yep their ability to get all of the sports news and information that they could uh, they could handle and um, and keep them up to date as to what was going on in the game. So uh, when you, I mean, I, I don't know a lot of uh, a lot of applications that were built back in the day when when certainly a lot of companies like RIM weren't really focused on the application. Um, the iPhone, as I, you know, I've talked to many entrepreneurs and the iPhone was really that kind of aha moment. Um, exactly. You know, it, it, you know, everything lit up from that point forward. Um, but I, it was still risky back then, even on, in the BlackBerry days, to build an application that charged a subscription fee that, that fed content uh, to the avid sports fan. Um, that was picked up by how many people? And, and uh, you know, what was, the, what was the feedback? Like, it was obviously enough to, to push into the iPhone. Absolutely. Well, it was picked up by a few thousand people, which I think was the number one little app that they had on, on that device at the time. I'm sure of it. Um, you know, and so because the smartphone hadn't evolved, um, the, the the business model really hadn't evolved for it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a huge expense for us to make a foray into that market and experiment with it. Um, from a relative perspective, so we were able to uh, to get started into it, and, and we did have a view that over time your mobile device was going to provide you with more and more and more technology. You could see the evolution of technology. You could see how wireless capability was expanding. You could see more you know, over time more and more things you could do with a wireless device. And so when the iPhone came out, it was just kind of that. Well, it was a real game changer. It was that evolution that people, I think, were somewhat looking for. Um, and we decided that it was very important for us to be out there early in that market space to try to see if we could establish a bit of a beachhead and see how interesting this could be. And, and we were very pleasantly surprised at how quickly we were able to get take up, yep. um, how many people loved the experience and, and wanted all of that information. Um, you know, we tried lots of different things and lots of different ways of presenting that information to people till we found the right mix. You know, the live blogging of games, the short form video content, uh, the odds, um, you know, highlight capability where we could. Um, and so we wanted to make sure, and so we've listened to our customers well. And so the iPhone really allowed us to continue to expand the growth of that. And then as we heard of BlackBerry coming down the pipe and Android coming down the pipe, uh, you know, Windows Mobile 7, et cetera, we yeah. made sure that we wanted to be uh, early out in the market. So, because the score is not going to have, you know, this is our next big media push. So there will not be score two, score three, and score four. Channels. There will be score mobile, score mobile FC, yeah. and maybe four or five or six other score mobile applications. So that focus in very specific sport genres where we can engage an audience and grab a conversation. I mean, Score Mobile was really a North American phenomenon. Yes. Um, you know, North American sports are really, for the most part, contained in North America. <laughs> uh, you know, there are not a lot of hockey fans in, uh, or NHL hockey fans in Italy. They're trying. Pardon me? I mean, they're trying, uh, you know. Uh, they're trying, but you know what, it's, I mean, if you ever go to Europe trying to find a sports score before you had Score Mobile, <laughs> you certainly didn't see them in the newspapers. No. Nope. And so, um, so it, you know, it was really a, a North American phenomenon. Um, when we built Score Mobile FC, it was really all about okay, how do I get a foray into the European market? Tons of BlackBerry users there, tons of smartphone users there. But well, what can I deliver to them that's interesting to them? Clearly, Major League Baseball is not interesting to a Brit, what? but what? but, but soccer <laughs> yeah. is a passion, and yeah. and every country, every region has a sport that they're as passionate about as we are passionate about our hockey. Right. You right. Know, and and you know, you know, in England they're passionate or Europe, they're passionate about their soccer. So we built an all soccer application called Score Mobile FC. Um, you know, they're passionate about cricket and rugby and other sports and other places of the world. Um, we may start to build applications that focus on that market space as smartphones evolve in China and India, etc. Um, you know, we'll go to where our market is. We'll go to where our customers. will develop something specific for that. So let me let me ask you this because you know one of the one of the cool things about about mobile uh, one of them. I mean, the whole industry is amazing. 
uh, because it's in this kind of ever evolving, ever ever innovating uh, state right now. But do you think that there's a point in time where the channel doesn't matter as much, the television channel doesn't as ma matter as much as the audience that you're creating from the applications on these multiple devices? We love the TV station today. Uh, obviously, it's a it's our big business, and and it does great. But absolutely, there's we we engage more people today. We engage two million people a month on our mobile device. We engage more audience today in mobile and web than we do on TV. That's insane. And, and that and that will continue to expand because we can engage them now outside of Canada. Yeah, I can engage. You know, sixty percent of those two million people, or over a million of them, come from the United States. Uh, you know, a few hundred thousand of them come from Europe. Um, and so I can engage an audience now all over the world. And, and so will it be, um, you know, ultimately, we think it'll probably be a bigger business than our TV business. We, we, uh, that we, we can see the business model evolve. We're in a couple of years. And so I'm not talking 10, 20 years. We're in a couple of years. <laughs> our web and mobile business is, you know, engaging more people, creating more revenue, um, has and is a, is just a bigger business than the television business. You know, it's funny because just continuing down this this uh, train of thought is that uh, you know, in order to set up a television show, there's a, a massive amount of expense, like a television channel. So, Absolutely. specialty channels, national, you know, you've got to get CRTC approval or whatever the governing body is. You've got to be able to uh, afford to be able to broadcast. You've got infrastructure, obviously. You've got cameras. You've got talent. You've got, you've got. Um, I mean, it's a big business. It's a big initiative, uh, and there's a traditional means to fund that, which is advertising, sponsorship, and, and yeah, and cable subscription, absolutely, and cable subscription, right? Uh, your your portion of that, um, but uh, mobile, um, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of citizen journals kicking back and and contributing to the conversation, and you build up that conversation, mobile mobiles are in relative terms inexpensive. To be oh, powerful. Absolutely. So, what do you think that that has to do? Like, what do you do? You think that this 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 changes the way that uh, that television is viewed in general? The sports fan, you know, what do you think that that's going to have an impact in a couple of years? If your audience is far greater, um, we'll talk about revenue a little later, but far greater on the mobile uh, side, uh, just from the apps and uh, your interactions on the mobile side, uh, you know, what do you think that does for the channel? the traditional channels for us right now. And I think for the foreseeable future, they're very complimentary. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's nice to be able to have a multi-platform capability so that we can, not, we can deliver to you pretty much wherever you want to be. Right. If you want to use your tablet, if you want to be on the web, if you want to be on mobile or you want to find your TV set, we can talk, we can have that conversation with you. Generally, I think you'll find sports fans will go to their device of highest fidelity. So if I, you know, I, I, if I have a choice between watching, uh, you know, an NFL football game on a mobile device or on my 58-inch flat screen at home in my basement or at a bar, yeah. you know, I'm probably going to go watch it on the 58-inch flat screen. Yeah. I'm probably then going to use my mobile device to have a conversation with my friends about the game. Right. Um, you know, but I think... One of the advantages we have at the score is we have that infrastructure that you talked about. You know, we spent over fifteen million dollars yeah, building yeah. our high definition studio. We have, you know, dozens of, of talent on contract that produce very interesting short form, unique content for us. Yep. We have producers, editors, writers. We have, you know, the uh, the statistics agreements, which are very expensive, cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. That give us all of that real-time data. And so in, in the mobile space, there are certain advantages that come with the complementary nature of having the TV station. Yeah. You know, uh, you know well, well, Bob in his basement will, can build a really cool blog. <laughs> We've hired a couple of really cool bloggers in here, like the Basketball Jones type guys, who were bloggers in their condo in the morning, and we decided to bring them in-house as a full-time content engine. Um, you know, they wouldn't be able to take us over from the sense of they don't have the stats agreements, they don't have big cameras, they don't have high fidelity, yep. you know, and all of those things, which ultimately I think the sports fan still craves. Yep. Um, you know, what the sports fan also, what we can then mix in with that is all of the social media aspects. So, you know, over probably 150,000 followers on Twitter now, 
um, you know, tens of thousands of people engaging us on Facebook, um, all of those type of things that we and, and hundreds of thousands on the web where we can engage people and say, okay, let's have a great conversation, a raw, authentic sports conversation um, about your favorite team, your favorite sport, your favorite game. Well, and I, I, you know, I don't see that the television is, is going to disappear. I think people have been trying to figure out how to make it disappear from a subscription, from a consumer side, right? Because I, you know, I, I subscribe to MLB.com. I'm a huge baseball fan, as many people who watch this or listen to this know. And, and I find myself uh, shopping in a, in a grocery store, uh, pulling up, uh, you know, live Yankees games on my iPhone. Um, and, it, you know, I'm, it, you're right. As soon as I get home, I'm not going to sit and watch it on my iPhone anymore. Um, I'm going to go and pull it up on my big TV HD, you know, um, yeah. television set. Um, but it's it's great in transient for for transient folks, right? Absolutely. Because because this is what I do. I'll watch the game on my television set, which is connected to my computer in in HD. Then I'll uh, get in my car and I'll throw it on my iPhone. I'll get the audio uh, playing through my car. And then I'll get to the grocery store, and as I'm waiting in line, I'll pull it up as a, on, on you know, the live game on TV um, on my iPhone, and then I'll do the reverse until I get back home, right? Um, so, but that's having a massive impact on the television channel because I'm not even interacting with a, with a major, like an ESPN or a TSN or anybody. I'm just interacting with MLB directly. Um, obviously, that's going to have an impact uh, on the, on, from the media's perspective, and mobile is doing that. It, it's a huge challenge right now in the traditional media space. A little less so in sports than it is in, in non-live event type traditional media. But, um, you know, that transition is, is, is difficult because I, I can't, as, as, a, as a broadcaster, I can't engage you and get the same revenue capability out of you from an advertising paradigm perspective on that mobile device as I can on the TV station. Right. So the big challenge and the evolution that's taking place right now is how do I evolve business models for web and mobile? Um, you know, I, I heard a saying at Next Media uh, a month ago where I'm converting dollars of advertising revenue on TV to dimes on web to pennies on mobile. <laughs> it, it's not quite that severe, but if I were a broadcaster of a one hour sitcom or drama on TV, I'd be very, very worried about that. Yeah. Um, as, a, uh, as a broadcaster who now can reach out to over a million people outside of Canada and engage them in a conversation that they never could before, the upsides will outweigh the downsides. Um, you know, people will, people will still, people still love their TV set. Yeah. And they will for quite a while. And we'll, we'll come and engage you on the TV set now soon through IPTV, which is our next big gadget, which says, great, um, you know, you want to watch that live game, let me bring you, or you can't, uh, you know, the kids are dominating the TV because they want to watch cartoons. It's okay, Dad, I'll put a live score ticker on the bottom of any channel you want to watch. Yeah. Um, Just so and, you know, uh, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay to do that. To your, well, to your I know, parents, but... Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, that'll, be, that'll be the negotiation that yeah. takes place. Okay, kids, you can watch half hour of the... the, the I, I'm not going to br brand anybody else in there, but yeah. you can watch half hour of cartoons, but daddy needs to have the ticker on the bottom yeah. that lets me know what's going on in the, in the games. And if, uh, you know, a little red zone highlight comes up, you know what, on commercial Sorry. break on that cartoon, we're going to flip over and catch the highlight, or I'm going to click on my IT TV, TV widget and get the highlight of what's going on in the game. And, uh, and so it, it, for us, mobile and web have become a very complementary tool to what's going on on the television station. Um, you know, we have a, still have a great mix of event-driven conversation, event on TV, um, you know, analysis around the event um, on TV that, uh, that we're also able to then engage that audience even further now on web and mobile. So what, what about, um, you know, certainly the audience, your audience has expanded. So you've got, say, 2 million users monthly that use, use the products on the mobile side. But what about, uh, uh, are you allowed to repurpose content, like your own created content and push it out through these mediums so that essentially you're, you're creating, you know, mobile channels of your content? Absolutely. I mean, as long as it's not rights fee driven. Right. So I, I can't take, you know, a, a, uh, an MLB highlight that I paid for the Canadian highlight rights for right. and show those highlights in the United States. Right. 
trust me, the first time I do it, I'll have a little phone call from MLB saying that writes it. So we geo block everything, right? Um, even where we can do that. But but most of what we find engages our audience are things like the basketball Jones, yeah. where they're having a conversation about all the basketball games. We're, you know, Puck Daddy, all of those type of people that we engage, uh, that create tons of content for us, um, you know, create a lot of that conversation for us. The footy show, Tim and Sid Uncut, yeah. we can send that out anywhere all over the world. And yeah. so they're starting to build a brand and an audience uh, outside the Canadian borders, and they're building up that audience entirely via our web and mobile distribution capability. That, that to me is, a, is incredible. So you've got a high production quality content because that's what you guys do. Absolutely. Big studio, uh, you've got on-air talent that's creating a brand locally in Toronto and in Canada and across Canada. And then what they're able to do very quickly is almost with a flick of a switch, quite literally, is create global brands out of those, uh, those television shows ultimately um, and, uh, and, and distribution can, can be incredible uh, as a result of that. Absolutely. So and and that's, that's the amazing thing about the mobile and tablet device that, you know, I think we'll, we'll really see kind of the expansion of the score brand where that yellow S logo uh, or yellow and blue S logo will mean something to people in the United States. It'll yeah. mean something to people in the United Kingdom. But it won't um, mean a television show. Or a telev- it won't mean a, a television channel. It'll 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 no, mean something. They, they probably different. won't even know that there's a TV station in uh, based on at King and Peter that actually is the score. I They'll know. be like, really? They have a TV station too? And ultimately, we joke, you know, ten, twenty years down the road, five years down the road, some big international conglomerate will come and have a conversation with us, and they'll go, really? You have a TV station too? We didn't know that. We thought you were just a web and mobile company. Yeah, and, and you know the surprise at how you can create such great quanti- great quality con- uh, content, um, and and push it out there, uh, you know, in a mobile device because they they just it, it won't television, um, you know, time shifting is an interesting concept around television because you know I think it's the first foray into convenience around the the the, the person watching it, but you know we've talked about this before about sports not being time shiftable. Uh, not really, no. It's not relevant um, at the end of the game anymore, ultimately. Um, I know no, Google... I'll still want to know what the score is, but you know, I know the Leafs lost to Calgary last night. I caught little bits of it during the game. I'm not going to go watch the broadcast of the Leafs game no. uh, or the Sens game or the Canadians game the day after. No. Once I know the score, I'm pretty much done with it. We'll have a conver- We'll probably have a conversation around the game. Yeah. You know, as to well, is the road trip going well, or is the team playing better, or the Sens starting to improve? Is you know, is Kovalev uh, you know starting to get along with his teammates again? Uh, <laughs> not, you know, not these that, ones. Yeah. <laughs> that fun kind of stuff, you know, and that's that's the conversation that sports fans want to have the next morning. That's con- it's it's all contextualized, right? So there, there's there's a point in time during you know the three periods of a hockey game, the four quarters of a football game, the nine innings of a baseball game, where while you're embedded in there, it's one conversation, and it, it can be a continuous stream, but it's context to the game. The moment you know the buzzer goes off, the bell rings, the n- bottom of the ninth is finished, and uh, the games are over, the conversation immediately switches, right? So y- you get caught up very quickly. Through, through mobile, and then the conversation goes into what happened, why, what, this, this, that. Well, as you say, it switches, it doesn't end. No, that's, that's you know, the key point. The conversation carries on 24 hours a day practically, and yeah. that's the, the very interesting part about the whole social media aspect of what we do. Yeah. Is that, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, we embraced all the social media aspect because we were always about the conversation around the game. I wasn't about just giving you a game with a big sports anchor desk and let me tell you what you should know about the hockey game and here's the broadcast and then I'm gone. It was always about let's have a conversation all day long about you know the the game that's coming up tonight, uh, the playoff races and this and that, who's playing well and then when the games are over let's have another conversation in game let's have a conversation (laughs) and so the score has always been about and you know and, and from the initial instant we launched mobile applications and web it was about how do we create more than a one-way conversation with our audience? How do, you know, how do we engage them? How do we allow them to converse back to us? And then ultimately, how do we allow this community of people to have a chat with each other? Yeah. You know, I just don't want them to talk to me either. I want them to talk to each other. I want them through you know, BlackBerry BBM 
um, integrated into our new super app that's coming out in the spring. Uh, product plug there. Nice. Uh, uh, you know, to be able to have a conversation with each other. You know, there's 20 guys in a fantasy uh, pool league together, and they're all having chats during the game. Did you see the? Uh, you know, the Raiders lose to Jacksonville on the weekend. Uh, I pick the Raiders. I'm out of the pool now or uh, all that type of stuff. You know, they're going to have that trash talk. They're going to have that conversation. Uh, you know, if uh, you're a Sens fan and I'm a Leafs fan, we're, we're natural adversaries. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're putting that aside right now. There will we're... definitely be lots of trash talk in between and uh, during a game like that. Yes, there always is. Unfortunately, both teams suck, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well, right now, yeah, yeah, it's not the it's not the glorious playoff uh, performances that we used to see. No, it's like which team sucks less. But y- you brought up a, a really interesting point here. Actually, two points in there that I wanted to key in on is that um, you know I've always felt an emptiness, and maybe it's just because, and not just in the sports, but um, you know when a television show ends, I'm watching it. I'm stationary. It's kind of it's layback mode. Um, TV, the TV show ends. It's kind of like, well, it's over. I, you know, I've got this. Yeah. I, you know, I'm full of, I'm full of kind of questions. I mean, I'm a Lost fan, right? And and oh, I love Lost. Yeah. Early yeah. on in, in the Lost, you know, in the first seasons, there was there was none of this social interaction. There was none of this mobile capability. So it's like, what the hell, right? Like, <laughs> that's how I finish basically every episode. And right. you want to you want to have a conversation with somebody? Did you just see that? Yeah. Exactly. But so you know, it always left me empty. Uh, you know, I got over it pretty quickly, but but it always left me empty. And, and the same thing with with sports is that at the end, at the end of a game, it's like it, you know, it, sometimes it's anticlimactic, sometimes it's you, you know, you just dismiss it. But the game's over, right? You, you know, it's so quick, and then three stars are up, and then it's done. So, I, I do you think that t- traditional TV stations that are broadcast focused, like outbound, pushing, pushing, they're just missing this massive opportunity of conversation? Absolutely. Like, I mean, absolutely. If if all you're focused on is let me push one way the live event to you. You have a you're 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 missing out on a fantastic opportunity with your audience to have a great conversation. Right. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a huge MMA fan. Last night at the end of the uh, at, at the end of the title fight, the guy jumps up, puts one foot on the fence, almost like in the Matrix, yeah. and then kicks the other guy in the head. <laughs> it's like it's like straight out of the movies. Well, that conversation took on for like an hour because yeah. like, nobody ever seen that before. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're right. It would be if at the end of it, it finished and you're like, okay, what? that was really cool, but I can't talk to anybody about it. It's like, no, no, no. I want to talk to people about that. Do you see that? That was unbelievable. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and so you're right. You want to have that conversation. And I think if you just broadcast one way, you're really missing that opportunity because you've got these, you know, millions of people watching who want to talk about what they just saw. Right. And, uh, you know, that's why talk radio does so well. But that was the second point is that, so, I mean, what you're doing with uh, the combination of television, extending it into mobile, is you're taking talk radio. So talk radio is, is one direction. It's ultimately angry guy or happy guy talking to a host. And, and you're doing that in a way, but what you're also trying to facilitate is angry guy talking to angry guy. Yeah, right? Not exactly. to the host, right? So exactly. So that's a different paradigm shift that could, that could impact what's going on on the radio stations today as well. And we've done that to some extent with the live blogging of the game, where we yeah. have those kind of in-game conversations. Um, I've followed a ton of our live blogs in different sports, and you see people from all over the world having a conversation about, you know, in golf, uh, you know, a lot of them will be talking about Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson or, you know, a Tiger's never coming back, he's totally useless now. <laughs> and, and, or, or in events, uh, you know, somebody will miss a critical putt, and they'll be like, well, one guy, that was a tough break. The other guy was like, no, he's just a choke artist anyway. So, you know, all of that kind of conversation takes place and everybody wants to be part of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, yeah, for mobile, there's lots of opportunities through the social media aspects of it, through the, the like, the BBM-like in, in capability of it yep. to create that conversation. And, and you create a far more valuable, interesting audience if you allow them to gauge with, with each other as well as with you. Yeah, well, I, you know, it also creates this uh, this endearing brand in their eyes about what what app to go to, what what station to watch, right? Or is my home to have the sports conversation? Yeah. Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to create. Yeah, and, and I think that if you go in with that kind of mentality, you've got that. Um, you know, I've seen this on on some of the bigger uh, television stations where it's you know, hey, send us a note by Twitter, and and you know, um, thank you very much. Credits roll, right? Uh, and, and that's not that's not engagement the way that you're talking about engagement. No, and you know it, it, and that's it, for us. Mobile and web really just kind of 
allows us to extend the kind of core philosophy that we've always had, which is, you know, as an as an, a passionate, enthusiastic sports fan, your opinion on players and games is as as relevant and valuable as our opinion. Yep. We don't know more about the game than you do. You're, you know, if you've been a passionate Leafs fan or a passionate football fan for 20 years, you know as much about the game and you're as passionate about the game as we are. And, and so we want you to be heard as well. Yeah. And so let's have that conversation. You know, we have amazing personalities here and, and their depth of sports knowledge, I'll tell you, is just unbelievable. When you, yeah. when you come into an environment like this and you realize how much about sports these guys know, you feel like a real uh, neophyte. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's amazing how much information and interesting content your fans bring to you as well in that conversation. And we've always been about... We want your opinions just as valuable as ours. We don't want to talk down to you about, okay, here, we're the panel of experts. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll tell you what you should think about uh, MMA or wrestling or football, et cetera. Let's have a chat because we know you know as much about the Green Bay Packers or the Toronto Argonauts as we do. Yep. And you know what's what's amazing about this? And, and I'll, I'll put this on mobile. Um, you know, and when I talk about mobile, we're talking about any device, you know, like an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet. But, uh, you, you know, what, what mobile has, has allowed us to do um, with this broadcasting medium is, is I think that there's been stations and, and, uh, and TV shows that have been craving this feedback from, cu- from customers. And I think American Idol, good or bad, was one of the first uh, real... Uh, influencers when it came to this is that you know yes. have your say have your voice vote 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 um, made them a lot of money right but but have, yeah, your, yeah. have your have your, have your uh, say have your vote and you know I think um, there's no other better suited medium um, or or uh, genre than sports to to bring out that f- rabid fanatic in all of us and to start that conversation but there's really never been a, a real good medium to do it right so you can you can say listen we want your involvement we want your feedback you know as the old stations used to do send us a letter to this address yeah. right <laughs> exactly but but now what you've got is that if you can engage like you guys have you've got a rabid enthusiastic fan base that you've tapped into and mobiles allowed that is that is that too big a statement no not at all and 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 what we also allow and where we think we can differentiate and compete is we allow you to have that conversation the way you really want to have that conversation. It's not a filtered, distilled conversation with very nice and clean comments. <laughs> it is raw, authentic conversation. If I hate a particular player or I hate a particular call, you're going to hear about it just like if we were sitting together in a bar having that conversation. Like, yeah. I can't believe just what the bleep happened there on that call. <laughs> and that's that's what we've always been about. Or, you know, we will have that open conversation about... You know, when when Houston uh, tied that game up at the end of the game, all the Baltimore fans who bet Baltimore were kind of like, there's no way now we'll cover the spread because most field, games end in a field goal in overtime and we're, you know, a four-point favorite. Yeah. Um, but when they got the pick six, it was like, oh, wow, we cover our spread. Yeah, we just yeah. made money on this again. Life is fantastic, you know. And, and so a lot of people aren't going to engage you in, in that conversation the way we will. Well, and you know, a final note on, on this is, side of it is that what, you, what you're ultimately doing is, is uh, archiving an experience. So you've got pre, during, and post-game experience, uh, um, comments, and emotions, and thoughts kind of encapsulate that game. It just adds much more context ever to any Absolutely. sports event. You, you feel like you're, you're a part of the game. You yeah. feel like you're part of the experience. And, and for sports fans in particular, that's incredibly important. Yeah. We all want to feel part of that experience. We all are have our passion. And so, you know, as the score grows, a big part of that is how do we engage those passionate fans all around the world? Yeah. So, yeah, you know what? A guy in Africa is not going to be passionate about the Toronto Maple Leafs Calgary game last night, but no. he's going to be passionate about rugby or he's going to be passionate about cricket. And so maybe our next step is how do I engage that guy on that conversation? Because even though we don't know as much about that sport individually, I guarantee you his passion for that sport is just as deep as our passion for the Senators or the Leafs or the Yankees or the Blue Jays. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree, and it's tapping into those guys. So, so you know, I think the biggest question is that uh, you said it so well, is dollars to dimes to pennies, which is the big challenge 
and you know right now it is pennies um, in in mobile um, is you know I think that there's a transition that happens but how and and people become uh, more reliant on mobile every day it's a personal experience uh, you know I, that's the first thing that I go to when I want to find a score I don't turn on the television anymore because it takes too long yeah right? yeah yeah so um, you, you're somewhat sacrificing the dollar audience in advertising dollars um, and generating a massive audience that pick up the, their iPhones or their Blackberries or Android devices or iPads or tablets to find out that you know the scores how do you how do you how, how do you start generating the revenue that you need to in order to be able to sustain well I mean part of it in mobile is is just that expanded breadth and so, you know, I'm not getting as much per second of engagement as I am on the TV set necessarily. And by the way, TV's nowhere near dead. TV is a, a very strong, powerful medium. Uh, you know, people will always go to their highest point of fidelity and and yeah, that audience, you know what, and, and they'll use the TV and their mobile and they use the TV and their tablet together. Yep. I will definitely get kind of less per second of engagement from a mobile perspective so but I will get a much broader audience and and for us especially in the score you know as a CRTC regulated television station I have a reach of 10 million households you know and I'm in 7 million of them right now and that's about as good as it's gonna get I'm not gonna be in 30 million households next week because there aren't that many households in Canada yeah whereas I can be in front of 2 million people, which will hopefully soon be 3 million and then 5 million and then 10 million people around the world that I can engage with and have a conversation with and create value to advertisers from the sense that there's a community that's all focused and passionate about very particular things. Yep. And so as an advertiser, I can start to send them very directed advertising. I can say, okay, you know, one of the interesting features we put on mobile is a thing we did with Budweiser called Bud Bar Finder. Yeah. Um, it's I, I list up every game and what channel it's on. Doesn't matter whether it's on the score or not. And based on where you're standing, it will direct you to the nearest bar that's generally pouring bud on tap, obviously, um, so that you can go and watch the game. Yeah. And and what mobile and what mobile gives you the opportunity to do that TV doesn't, that even web doesn't, is it brings you a customer that's that much closer to the buying decision. If I'm looking for something on mobile. It probably it's like the old yellow pages thing, you know. If I open up the yellow pages to look for something, nine times out of ten I'm gonna buy. Yeah. Well, you're getting like that on mobile too. And so more and more you're seeing the advertiser recognize the value of that. And we've seen mobile rates increase from an advertising perspective. We've seen the percentage of our mobile ads that we sell out on a monthly basis continuously increase. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, even in the last six months, we've seen quite a significant shift where advertisers now, I absolutely have to get some dollars into the mobile market because you're engaging an audience, you know, in Canada, if they're doing a Canadian only advertising of six to 800,000 people a month, you know, that's a pretty good size audience. And I'd like to have a conversation with that audience. And if I know they're passionate about sports, um, then I can direct something very specific to them as opposed to a generic ad on a conventional TV station, which may or may not have any resonance with them. Well, you know, and that's that's so true because, uh, you know, you've you've basically segmented a market and uh, and people on, our, on their mobiles are, are uh, you know, it's a personalized experience and you've segmented it down to the point where they, you know whether or not they're sports fans. And not only that, you can you can bring it down even further based on their, their uh, you know, as they filter through the site. You know, eventually Absolutely. You'll, to, you'll know that I'm a Yankees fan because I pull up the Yankees score, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, uh, and so there's there's a lot of that type of opportunity, the GPS capability in the phone. Yeah. You know, mobile has not yet done a great job of of tra like web of tracking the user where they are, what they do, yeah. you know, kind of the other engagements. But that's just a technology that will continue to evolve. You know, and so soon your mobile device will probably tell more about you than probably than you want people to know. <laughs> but you know, from an advertiser perspective, it, that's important data. Yep. Okay. He's, yeah. He's yep. a big sports fan. He's a big Leafs fan. Uh, he's a big Raiders fan, and therefore, um, I want to direct things advertising to him that's around those specific things because that's my best level chance for engagement with him. Right. Right. And and you know it's it's funny because I think that 
you know, uh, certainly television uh, shows, television stations have become the most innovative uh, group of, for integrating advertising where they can. You know, I thought that arenas were like that because, you know, on the ice now, you've got uh, advertising. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's, it, you, you use non-traditional ways. Like your, your, your Bud example is that, um, you, you know, I don't think that uh, traditional advertising is not going to work on a mobile device. Banner ads don't work. All this stuff doesn't work. But, but integrating the brand into the app uh, for a feature certainly is a very effective way to generate revenue. In integrated advertising, I think, will be very powerful on mobile. Yeah. Um, certain types of banner advertising have worked very well. Yep. We found that, for instance, movie trailers have worked incredibly well in mobile. Wild. Um, you know, and and uh, you know, it, then we're creating. You know, the next level, we be able to create the links directly to the, the the purchase of tickets. But if there's a new movie trailer out and I people see a banner ad on it, um, they click on it, they go to the YouTube trailer. You know, people are very interested in that type of stuff. Um, there's a lot of contesting or information type things that they can do. Um, and then I think more and more you'll start to see more location-based advertising. Yeah. So it knows where I am. So if I'm trying to advertise, you know, Tim's or Starbucks or Canadian Tire or Home Depot or whatever you want to that person, it's like, hey, you know what, you, you should be getting this. Uh, you probably, you know, crave a cup of coffee. Click here and I'll tell you where the five closest coffee shops are where you can go and get one. And maybe here's a coupon. Yep. For ten cents off, um, you know, or or something like that. That'll be, you know, it. It's all about and 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 advertisers have always wanted this. How can I get to that customer in his decision making time, so that I can get part of, be part of that decision? And and that's what I think mobile from an advertising perspective will offer a very powerful medium that's not available in other devices. So do you? I, maybe I don't know if you can answer this because I don't think anybody really knows, but. Um... Do you, do you foresee a point where, you know, the the revenue from mobile just overshadows the revenue from the television station? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I see that actually. John Levy, our CEO, and I will debate the time frame of that constantly. But you, but you both agree. We both agree oh, yeah. that uh, I say three to five years. John yeah. will tell you it's on the short end of that. I'll tell you it's in the midterm of that. Yeah. Um, maybe in the short term of that. It all depends kind of what our next couple of uh, forays into the mobile space are. But yeah. I can easily see that we will generate more advertising revenue from web, mobile, tablet, digital media yeah. than we do from TV. And that's not because TV is declining. No. We actually think TV will continue to grow at a nice little pace here um, because we're, we seem to have found the right niche of how to deliver to our customer. Yeah. But we think that mobile will offer tons of opportunity with a big audience engagement now to be able to generate tons of revenue. Well, you see, I, I think that's the power statement right there. Uh, you, you know, um, I, I don't think that television is going to disappear. I just think that television and the way that we interact with television is going to change dramatically over the coming. It already years. has, and it will continue to absolutely. And, and so, thinking about that, is that you know, I, I some people ask me all the time, say, well, you know, what what does the next two years look like in mobile? And I say, well, you know. Uh, who, who in their right mind would open up their mouth and tell you what the next two years look like? Because nobody knows. Nobody a year ago could tell you what, the, what was going on uh, today. And everybody who predicted in you know late 2009 about the mobile space in 2010 is dead wrong. Um, because it, tablets changed everything and, and uh, you know uh, adoption has changed dramatically. But if you look short term... We talked about the integration with BBM, which is a real-time chat mechanism through um, yep. your messaging mechanism through through BlackBerry, which I think is great. Um, uh, what what else? Do you mind sharing a little bit about what your your thoughts are about where you're going to go, uh, and and we'll finish up. Sure. Um, you know, I think again, you know, we've talked about this a lot during the conversation and off camera. We will create more and more ways for our audience to communicate with each other. And I think for mobile, that you know, that social media aspect. Hold that is, thought for one one second, Tonga. I, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but say that again. You're going to create products that facilitate the conversation between fans. Exactly. You know, and that is so different from broadcast stations or broadcast mentality about we're going to build something for you to consume. But what you're talking about is facilitating. There's, there's a million ways, you know, it, to a large extent, sports news and information is a commodity. Yeah. You know, you, so the score is not your only source for the score of the game. Right. So how do I create 
a, a need for you to come to the score. Well, I give you a place to be heard. Yeah. Um, and, and as sports fans, we all want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so every day here, we have that conversation about how do we create the environment to create the conversation among our fans? Because we think that's a critical piece. The technology continues to evolve to allow us to do that. BBM integration within the app. So while I'm in the score app, I can BBM my friends. That's a big part of it. You know, and as we get that on other platforms, that'll be very important. Yep. The tablet experience, I think, is becomes a big, you know, there's a big social media aspect to that. It also becomes a really cool in-game companion. Yeah. So I may be watching the, you know, because nobody just sits in front of the TV set anymore. If I watch my kids consume content, it's it's bizarre. They're they are chatting with 427 people on Facebook at the same time. Uh, they're watching movie trailers. They got something on the TV set. He's yep. probably on her cell phone. Yep. You know, it's just they're, I don't even know how they cope sometimes. It's, uh, you know, they have a huge ability to multitask. Yep. And, and so the tablet, I think, will offer you an amazing in-game companion experience. So you know, I love my 58-inch flat screen, high-def TV, and sitting in front of it watching the game. That tablet, though, will give me all of my scores, all of my stats. If uh, Darren McFadden has run 20 times for 112 yards, you know, I will know all of that instantly. I will know the score of every game. I'll know exactly where I am in my pool for the weekend. Um, and I'll be chatting with all of my friends um, either through Score Mobile or the Score app or Twitter or Facebook ab about the game, you know, saying, oh, did you notice that? Hey, I'm, I'm catching up to you in the pool. I, I got two games on you this week. I'm only one behind you for the season. You know, you'll be having all those conversations. Or if I know, you know, one of my guys is a big Dolphins fan and I'm a Raiders fan, so if we're playing against each other, you know, we've got bets on the game and we're trash talking yeah. all game yep. long. You got it. That's, that's, what the, that's what the score tablets, mobile devices, all of that stuff we create will be part of. The, the other big foray, I think, for the score, um, when you look at kind of leading edge technology, is, is we believe that internet TV will also become quite big over the next five years. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it'll be bigger and more important than 3D TV for sports. Yes. Um, you know, I think 3D is kind of a neat thing, but traditional sports hasn't really broadcast itself in a 3D friendly way. And so there's, there's still tons to work out in that environment. Yeah. But IPTV is a very cool environment. I mean, it's, a, it's an opportunity to then say, okay, when I've got you in front of that TV set, um, I don't care what channel you're watching. Let's put the score ticker up. Let's give you all your sports news and information. Let's let you click on things if you want to watch, you know, uh, the score on the NFL and the guys' gold, silver, and bronze picks before your, uh, your NFL experience. Click on that. Or if you want to watch the Basketball Jones guys chat a little bit about the game coming up tonight, let's do that. You know, the score mobile will offer you all our score on IPTV will offer you all of that. And as kind of standards evolve and we figure out who the real IPTV players are, you'll see us as one of the first guys out on that environment. Yeah. Well, I, and, and, you know, I, I wouldn't even ask you to predict beyond that because I, I, I think that uh, something will disrupt and, and, you know, we'll be, uh, you know, Im embedding retina viewing into our uh, our and, and the nice thing about it is, you know, we're being a smaller shop, uh, having all the decision makers in a very close perspective, yeah. um, you know, we have that flexibility. So if we decide that, you know, Windows Mobile 7 is coming out, should that be our fourth application platform for Score Mobile? That's a conversation where you drag a bunch of guys into a room. There's no big conferences. There's no memos to the CEO. There's no, it's like, hey, John, are we going to do this or not? Here's the cost. We can get it built in two months and we'll be out and ready in the market quicker and faster than everybody else. And we will go and establish a beachhead of market share there early that once they get that experience with us, we tend to be able to keep them. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, listen, Tom. I I appreciate uh, the insights that you've given about what uh, you, you know. We're really talking about the impact that mobile is having on 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 the sports fan and on the way that s sports are being broadcast today, which is one way. And I think that you know, uh, hopefully, people find inspiration from you know and ideas from what you guys are doing at the score to interact more, to bring this uh, you know from from the television set um, onto your hip ultimately. And, and to have much more engagement from a community that's far beyond what the station actually reaches. Um, you know, geographically, having people around the world uh, tune into the score uh, through their applications and through their mobile devices is something that, 
you know, this is a unique time in history, and I really appreciate you uh, for giving giving us this insight. Thank you. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. Anytime. And uh, you guys in the audience, thank you for listening to this. Thank you for watching this, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks, Tom. No problem. Cheers.